this event uh, is the worst, most devastating, most deadly tornado event in Kentucky's history. We will be north of at least 70 lives lost here in Kentucky. I think we will have lost more than 100 people, and I think it could rise significantly. We're seeing things that none of us have ever seen before. The, the damage here is, is indescribable. It's, uh, it's changed the landscape of the, of the city that we, that we know uh, here in Mayfield. windows start breaking, dogs flying through the air. I didn't know what to do. Walls feel like they was caving in. It was very scary. I just want everybody to know that you are not alone. Today, Kentucky is absolutely united. We're united with our people. This is one of those times when we aren't Democrats or Republicans. Sounds like hyperbole, but it's real. We're all Americans. We stand together as United States of America. And so I say to all the victims, you're in our prayers. It wasn't just Kentucky that was affected by severe and deadly weather from Friday into Saturday. More than 50 tornadoes were reported in eight different states. Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, Ohio, and Tennessee. Several of those states have reported deaths related to the weather. And CNN meteorologists say it's possible that a single tornado stayed on the ground for more than 250 miles from Arkansas to Kentucky, leaving a path of violence behind it. The Bluegrass State was the hardest hit. Kentucky's government hasn't released an official death toll. It's just not known yet with phones down, power lines down, and debris preventing rescuers from getting through some terribly damaged communities. The Kentucky National Guard has been deployed to clear roads, conduct searches, and bring power generators to hospitals and shelters. A candle factory in the state collapsed with workers inside. That was in the city of Mayfield you heard about. 10,000 people live there, and its downtown area was completely devastated, according to Kentucky's governor. An Amazon warehouse was destroyed in Illinois. Officials say at least six people were killed in that building. And a nursing home collapsed in Arkansas. That state's governor said it was a miracle that only one person died there after the roof was lifted off. There were warning sirens in advance of at least some of these tornadoes, but even in buildings with concrete walls and steel frames, the destruction was intense. In some places, rescue workers were using their hands to dig through debris in the search for survivors. And as their work continues, churches, community, and charity groups are accepting donations for the people affected. CNN has a link to some of the national organizations involved in the relief effort. You can find that at CNN.com impact. 10 second trivia. What makes up the fastest growing stream or flow of global waste? Electronic waste, construction waste, packaging, or plastic? Discarded electronics, also known as e-waste, compose the fastest growing stream worldwide. Dispose of garbage, turn waste into energy, and give people in the relatively flat city of Copenhagen the chance to go skiing. These are a few of the goals of Copenhill, a massive incinerator project in the Danish capital. It's had its challenges. For one thing, it cost $670 million to build, which critics say is especially expensive when Denmark should be recycling instead of burning its garbage. They also say it's too big, that Copenhagen doesn't produce enough garbage for it to use, so workers have had to import waste from other areas to fill its large furnaces. And the surface of the artificial ski slope wore out faster than officials thought it would, so they're having to close parts of it to make repairs. 
For a look into the upsides and goals of the project, here's CNN's Richard Quest. There it is. Said to be one of the most efficient waste to energy plants in the world, this amazing structure transforms about half of Copenhagen's rubbish into heat and power. Efficiency to one side. Where else can you slalom down a hill full of garbage? It's part of the philosophy of the famed Danish architect Bjarke Ingels. Even if the product is practical, the packaging doesn't have to be. Wow! Welcome to our production facility. This is good, old-fashioned, modern technology. It is. Pipes, tubes, <laughs> steam, <laughs> noise. <laughs> exactly. It all starts here. Up to 300 waste trucks stop every day and feed the belly of the beast. And then turn up the heat, it's dropped into the furnace. The fire heats water but creates steam. The steam is converted into energy, et voila! You have enough power to heat about 150,000 local homes. And that, says Simosen, is not even the point. The purpose of this place is waste treatment, right? We're not here to produce energy. We are here to provide waste treatment solutions. Citizens all over the world every day buy products, and those products come with an environmental bill. We want to minimize this bill of the citizens. Absolutely full. It is very full right now. Yeah. What Simonsen is saying, of course, is they are cleaning up our mess because someone has to. And, thankfully, they are good at it. The claim to fame is right here, in the smoke. It's filtered from nearly all contaminants. It is monitored and measured 24-7. All that's left is steam and CO2. Carbon capture. The Holy Grail. It is. The next project is using a pioneering chemical process that claims to capture 90 to 95 percent of the carbon emissions from the plant before then being released into the atmosphere. The Danish capital's ambition is to become the world's first carbon neutral city. Can you be CO2 neutral or negative by 2025? Yes. That is the aim, that is the goal, and that is what we are, what we are working on. A game changer? Yes, if it works. Taking it all in from a breathless ascent, Ooh, I get a glimpse not only of the city below, but of the future of waste management for all of us. And the picture is pretty. The Grinch would consider this house a challenge. If you've ever wondered how many decorated Christmas trees could fit into one place, this residence in Germany holds the Guinness World Record. Before we get to the number, let's marvel at the display. Owners have been working on it for months. Each tree was decorated by hand. There are 300 strings of lights, 10,000 ornaments, and all that adorns the record number of 444 Christmas trees which is quite a sash. It makes sense that stocking a house like that would decorate the blue ribbon. And now that their name's in lights, it's time to go rocking around the Christmas trees that garlanded them a record by garnering a gift they ornament to hang by the chimney with care, assuming they can find the space. That about wraps up our show, Kennesaw Mountain High School. Shout out to the Mustangs of Kennesaw, Georgia. We will be on the air through this Wednesday. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.